In this video today, I want to show you something really interesting about these two bolts. I have here two apparently identical bolts, yet one of these bolts is good and can be reused, and one of these bolts is not good and shouldn't be reused. Now, before we understand what's wrong with one of these bolts and figure out which one it is, I want to make sure we understand how a bolt works. We all probably use bolts quite a bit, but maybe we don't understand exactly how they work and the engineering that goes into them. So when we tighten a bolt and we turn it and it threads into an object, the threads then begin to pull against the head of the bolt and it stretches. And it's actually that stretching that applies the clamping force to the objects that we are trying to fasten with the bolt. And you'll notice this portion of the bolt right here where it has a narrower neck on the shank. This is the part of the bolt that is designed to do the stretching and that applies that clamping force. All bolts are designed to stretch. Some bolts are designed to be torqued even farther until they stretch to the point that they permanently deform and they never return to the original shape, and that's called yielding. And those bolts are called torque to yield bolts. And that's why sometimes in our specifications we're told to not reuse bolts. Now when we're doing something like an engine, there are some bolts that are very critical and the tightening specifications are very precise and important and we need to follow the steps. We're told to make sure the threads are clean, make sure they're lightly lubricated. Don't dip them in oil, but wipe them with a lightly lubricated oil rag. We lubricate the back of this head, or if there's a washer, we lubricate that washer so that the friction points are all lubricated, and then follow the steps precisely. And you'll usually go through several steps. It might say tighten to 15 foot-pounds, and then tighten this to 30 foot-pounds, and then turn it 90 degrees, for example. If you get those kinds of instructions, I would recommend that you tighten to 15, following the sequence and tightening each of the bolts in order to 15 foot-pounds, and then follow the sequence again as you tighten to 30 foot-pounds, and repeat that step one more time. Go back and check that they're all at 30 foot-pounds before proceeding to the final step, which would be rotating the bolt 90 degrees. Now, just because you rotate the bolt 90 degrees doesn't mean this is a torque-to-yield bolt. Right? That's why you check your specifications to see if this bolt can be reused or if it should be replaced. If you look at the head of a metric bolt like this, you'll often see two numbers. The first number represents the tensile strength of the bolt, and that's how much pressure can be applied to this in a tension direction, so stretching that bolt, before the bolt will fatigue and fracture. Right here, I have a bolt. If you look closely at it, you can see that it has cracked right there in the middle. You can see through parts of that. This bolt has fractured. In other words, it was over tightened until it passed its tensile strength. Now the second number on the head represents the yield strength. And this 9 means that the yield strength of this bolt is 90% of its tensile strength. So 90% of the strength that would have cracked it will cause it to yield, but not break. Now when it yields, the clamping force actually continues to increase to a point before eventually the bolt gives way and fractures. So that's why we have torque to yield bolts. We can actually amplify the clamping force when we do that. This bolt here is an example of a bolt that was over tightened again and it yielded. If you could see in the middle, it stretched and permanently deformed and should not be reused. So having said all this, let's take a look at these two bolts got a micrometer here. And we can come over and check the bolts. We can find what the width of that bolt shank is. And check up and down. And this bolt should be the same. Now let's tighten this just a little bit to where it no longer slides over the shank of the bolt. Let's try this bolt. Oh, look right here. As I get down here, the micrometer does slide over this part of the bolt. Yet it won't fit here, it won't fit on the other bolt. What does that tell us? This bolt has passed its yield point. So these bolts came to me the other day when some students came in and said, I think that we may have over tightened one of these bolts. Is it safe to reuse it? And we said, well, I don't know. It depends on if we've tightened it so that the bolt has yielded. And we can see that this bolt has reached its yield point. Now this just goes to show that a visual inspection isn't enough when it comes to determining if a bolt should be reused or not. 
Now on an engine, for example, we have cylinder head bolts, connecting rod bolts, and main bearing cap bolts. Those are our important bolts. I'm not saying that other bolts aren't important or the torque specifications aren't important on them, but particularly when we're dealing with connecting rods and cylinder heads, the clamping force on those bolts needs to be precise if we want to ensure the longevity of our engine. Anyway, I hope that that helps and that you can use this information sometime in the future.